there's three things in any endeavor that you want to focus on. And if you do, you become unstoppable. It's mindset, skill sets, and habits. Mr. Brad Lee. Brad, welcome to the Epic Real Estate Investing Show. Thank you, sir. What's up, Matt? Good to see you, buddy. You're looking sharp. Thank you. Uh, love the show. Big fan. You got good conversations, good guests. How long ago did you start the podcast? My podcast? Probably 2018. Okay. And what was what was the big inspiration for it? Man, I just had a lot of subject matter experts coming in and out of my studios to film their courseware. Mm -hmm. My whole mission in life is to get the knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it. Because I think that's why people are struggling, man. They don't have the right information. So there's people out there killing the game. How come we can't get that information to someone who needs it? So my whole mission is, hey, let's get that knowledge to the people who need it. Mm -hmm. Make the whole world more successful. Right. Well, here I am doing it through Lightspeed, obviously. And I got freaking Tony Robbins and Grant Cardone and you and all these other people coming in and out, filming their courses. And I thought to myself, dude, why don't I get a couple microphones and pick their brains while they're here? Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. It's worked out really well. Congratulations for your success. Oh, thank you. And by the way, when I did it, mm -hmm. everybody said, dude, don't start a podcast. Everybody's got to start. Everyone's got a podcast. You're going to look like a total douche. <laughs> right? And I said, well, I probably already do. So let's, <laughs> let's just move forward. Uh, I started mine in 2009 when nobody even knew what a podcast was. No kidding. Yeah, so I to, this one? Yeah, this one right here. Dang, dog. How many episodes yeah, you got? Yeah, I don't know where. 1700 1800 something like that i didn't know that dude damn yeah. that's it that's epic. This is the longest running real estate investing podcast out there right now so wow yeah. okay well well what's happening in the industry let's go well, real true i mean it's a, the big stories on interest rates right when i hear real estate i think realtors yeah but then there's also real estate on the investment Correct. side, flippers etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm -hmm. What do you focus on, the flippers and the investing side, or do you focus on the realtor side? Oh, definitely not the agent side. I spent four years as an agent, but uh, ah. I, just, I saw how much more money there was to make in profits than commissions. So, <clears throat> Yeah, well, agents, I forget what agency it was, but they had me show up and talk to like a thousand real estate agents. Mm -hmm. And the guy asked me the wrong question in front of him. <laughs> and I always tell the truth mm -hmm. and I keep it real. I, and again, I mean, I apologize in advance if that offends Not me, necessary. That's just what I do. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's like he said, what would you do if you were a realtor? And right in front of the whole freaking tribe, I said, I'd quit. And he went, what? And he started laughing like I'm joking. I said, dude, I'd quit. I wouldn't be selling real estate. You don't get rich selling real estate. Nobody gets rich selling that shit. You get rich owning it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like I would be like. I'd, I'd leverage my real estate license, but I would not be a realtor. I'd be, I'd move over here to the investment side. Yeah. So like if you're selling a house to an investor and you do it all the time, why do you think that investor's buying the house, fool? You make your little commission and you run off like a little freaking rat eating cheese. Like you've like, like you're like, you got yourself a little reward when in reality, the big money you just missed. Yeah. Like I wouldn't do that. And dude, jaws were, were dropping in the audience. And it was like, I can't believe he said that. Well, brother, love ain't lies. I'm not going to lie to you. If I were a realtor, especially now, I'm quitting and I'm going to get into the investment side of things. You don't need any money. You need knowledge. Yeah, that was the big turning point for me, actually. It was like you're right, reading my mind. It was on a Saturday. I was dressed up in my suit and tie, had all the paperwork set, uh, laid out on the desk for my two investor clients to come and sign. They showed up 20 minutes late. They were in jeans and a t-shirt. They signed their documents. They took off. And then I was left there to hold their house open on a Saturday. And I was just like, no way, not anymore. Right. And so that was the big turning point for me was that epiphany right then and there when I saw the difference between my life and theirs. So <clears throat> big difference. Um, you know, Brad, every time we talk, it's always business, business, business. I don't know too much about you personally. What is the where does the Brad story start? Where did it really start getting exciting and how'd you end up here? Well, I mean, up till about the age of 30, I was like anybody else running around trying to get rich, trying to, you know, get what I could. Mm -hmm. I was focused on myself, didn't really have the ethics and integrity to sustain any kind of real success anyway. But at some point I just decided to freaking help others. And then I evolved and, and got enlightened and realized how easy it is to make money and, and, and you know, been there ever since, but I've got seven kids from four women. It sounds like a train wreck, but I can explain that very easily. <laughs> 
I dropped out of school when I was 16, obviously didn't go to college. I got into sales when I was 18, technically 17 and, and some change, but 18, let's just say, and ultimately mastered the game of sales. And then that took me to where I'm at today. Like the ability to sell, close and persuade is literally the core skill set that I possessed or developed and possessed that that's made all the difference in the world. Yeah. The sales thing is. It's in every entrepreneurial endeavor. I mean, it's a required thing, right? What's the, for people, I mean, because I talk to a lot of people that are making this transition from their corporate job. They've been there 10 years or so, and they decide they're kind of bored with it. They wish they would have taken a few more chances. And now they're in a position where they're financially ready. And now they want to. And, you know, some succeed, some don't. And what I see is that the real big difference is when people are leaving this employee environment and go out into an entrepreneurial environment. I mean, mindset for a lot of people sounds like, woo, just get to the tactics. But it's such the important part. Don't you agree? What is? Mindset? mindset. Yeah. I mean, they're two totally different ways of living. Matt, it's obvious you don't follow me, brother. <laughs> I was teeing you up there. That was like a softball. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, yeah, obviously, you know, mindset mm -hmm. is massively important and I preach it. You know, there's three things in any endeavor that you'd want to focus on. And if you do, you become unstoppable. It's mindset, skill sets and habits. So, like, for example, if your mindset's messed up, dude, your skill sets can be on point, but you're probably not going to do very well because you're this isn't right. So and by the way, that's ruined a lot of people. Mm -hmm. This can be right, but your skills are a little lacking. Well, then you're probably not going to go anywhere either. I mean, you can be all positive in the wrong direction. Right. So at the end of the day, it's not just your mindset. It's your mindset and your skill sets. Now, if you got a really great mindset and your freaking skills are on point, but your habits suck. Same same scenario. Right. So your habits now need to be on point. So, again, if you just focus on mindset, skill sets habits you're unstoppable in any industry in anything that you decide to, to to embark upon the skill sets in my opinion that i teach in my world is sales mm -hmm. marketing communication personal branding mm -hmm. those are nowadays must and i'm adding a fifth one now ai like you better understand and leverage ai or it's going to leverage you right out of business. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, those are the skill sets that I think most people will guarantee themselves a financial windfall if they have those skill sets, the habits. Uh, and again, I teach exactly what habits someone needs. And then mindset. If your mindset's right, your skill sets are right, your habits are right, bro, it's over. Done deal. I, Guaranteed. I, got I put my guarantee on it. Go prove me wrong. <laughs> no, I wouldn't take that bet. Um, so I get that all three are, are critical to the succeeding. Is there a sequence of, that they should be learned? I mean, is there one more important other mindset? Mindset. How do you learn mindset? How do you train mindset? Well, first of all, you have to start to read and, and get new information. Whatever your beliefs are, aren't there. You were programmed incorrectly, whatever they are. If you have limiting beliefs, you got to change those. You know, you want to be scarcity based. Never like I was going to use an example like in, in, in like in a dangerous situation, like, you know, hey, I'm cautious, but you don't want to be scarcity mindset. You want to be abundant mindset. You want to be optimistic. You want to be positive. There's so many people that allow the the outside, you know, bombardment of, of negativity affect theirs. Mm -hmm. And then once your vibration is negative, well, then you're emitting a vibration that's attracting other negative vibrations and it just ends up in a mess. So your mindset needs to needs to get right first of all and you read to start changing your beliefs because right now you're you believe the wrong things mm -hmm. like like abundance for example like bro there is no shortage of money there is no shortage of money people can talk shit all they want there is no shortage of money money is everywhere there is so much money it's unbelievable and it's right there okay some people there's no money it's i'm broke boy times are tough yeah, we're, we're, we're th these guys went bankrupt. See, the stock markets are crashing like everything's negative, negative, negative. So now they just shift their vibration essentially to negativity and then they uh, attract more of it. Mm -hmm. 
You wake up in the morning, you're fearful, you're doubtful, you worry, you're anxious. Well, that vibrational, like if you go to the tone scale, that's down here next to freaking envy and greed and negativity and depression. Like you want to be up here next to happiness and joy and love and gratitude and certainty and enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. How do you get there? Well, again, I wake up every day and realize how lucky I am to even wake up. Like that's worth more than anything I could possibly imagine. Why? Because I wouldn't trade something I could get for that. So that is so valuable. And, and I appreciate that so much that when I wake up, my, my level of gratitude just for waking up is so massive. Everything else is now an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So my perspective is immediately in the morning different than most. Mm -hmm. Their perspective is, oh, another day, another dollar. Oh, I'm going to have to deal with this. My damn house is getting repossessed. The freaking interest rates are through the roof. I don't play that game. So to change your mindset, you have to listen to a guy like me or read a book from a guy like me and then think, man, and, and, and throw it through your own filter. And then what happens is, unless you're really bad and you're pessimistic and you're just, your mindset's just scarce. And if it is, how do you change it? You read, brother. You read and you and you test. And I always say, prove me wrong. Don't believe me. Prove me wrong. Mm -hmm. Go out there and read some books on it. Mm -hmm. Test it. Don't just read and say bullshit. That's scarcity. Read and say, okay, let me let me prove this guy wrong. I'm going to do what he's saying. That's one way. Another way is to like raise your self worth. Okay, how do you raise your self worth? I have six. Very simple steps, okay? You first forgive yourself for all the crap you've put yourself through because we've all lied, cheated, and stole from ourselves our whole life. We literally screw ourselves out of everything. People say, I'm not a salesperson. You, you've been selling yourself short your whole damn life. You're a salesperson, trust me. <laughs> so number one is forgiveness. Then commit. You commit to do what you say you're going to do, and you, and you have some backbone, and you stick to it. Then you start racking up the wins because – Confidence comes from the memory of winning. So I want to win a lot. Mm -hmm. And most people, you know, are like, well, I don't, I don't, how do you just decide to win? By lowering what you consider a win. I consider drinking water a win. So when I open up this water, you guys see me taking a drink. I just mentally acknowledged. Winner. <laughs> I win all day long from the second I get up. I'm raising my heart rate, working out, eating right, hydrating, drinking water, prospecting, building relationships. I'm winning left and right. So I'm a winner. Winners win. I win all day. Okay, well, that starts to make you walk a little taller. And what happens is you is you look around and you're like, damn, dude, I, I can get a better car than this. Like I could be living in a nicer neighborhood than this. I can have a better relationship than this. And then what happens is people start to go, wait a minute. You're changing. Well, that's why I put step four in there. And step four is to get rid of all those people. Get rid of all the negative people and the negative headlines and the negativity. Get rid of it. Block it out. Why? Because it will drag you back down. It will change your vibration. Other people's negativity will affect you if you allow it. So I don't allow that shit. Sure. Talk negative, beat it. Mm -hmm. Does it mean, well, if it's your mom, well, then, dude, I'll see my mom again, and I'm sure she'll be negative again because my mom's negative. So guess what? Acknowledge it and then beat it. Don't talk to her. Not like I refuse to talk to my mother. When you talk to her, hey, how's it going, mom? Oh, this and that. This. All right, babe. Well, listen, I miss you. I'll call you later. Click. That's the same thing. So at the end of the day, you want to get rid of negativity. You got to get rid of negative people. You got to get rid of that nonsense. Okay. And continue to do it. Cultivate your people and make sure you're constantly leveling up. Okay. You are the people you hang around. That is the truth. So then the, the fifth thing that you want to do is visualize and figure out what exactly success looks like. Most people don't know what that looks like. So if you're going to go look for it or try to build it or try to, you know, chase it, well, you probably should know what it looks like, huh? So get specific as to what success to you looks like and then visualize it every day. Visualization works. And then step six is to seek knowledge. So you keep seeking that knowledge. You get your beliefs to change. Your beliefs change. Your actions change. Your actions change. Your results change. Mm -hmm. So if someone said, Brad, how do I get a positive mindset? Well, dude, you, you earn it. Okay. You don't just buy it. You earn it. How do you earn it? I just described exactly how you earn it. And if anybody tries to prove me wrong after 90 days, you'll probably be one of my biggest fans because your life will change. You will start to freaking love yourself more. And more importantly, you'll become more confident and your self-worth will increase. And when your self-worth 
goes up. Your net worth goes up, period. You want your net worth to go up? Well, then you better get your self-worth to go up. Well, that's, that's, I'm not, I don't need to be conceited and rude and arrogant. And that's, see, you got some scarcity ass bitch mindset right there. You think that's arrogant to have confidence? Yeah, look at this guy. He thinks he's so, listen, if you tell somebody, if you look at, like one time I, I walked in, I didn't know many people in the room, but I knew a few. So I walked in, looked around, walked over, talked to my uh, friend. Well, I heard somebody not too far away go, look at this dude. <laughs> he thinks he's so fucking cool. I ain't said anything except walked in the room. Do you know, do you know that that means psychologically that he thinks I'm cool? He thinks I'm cool. And he's pissed about it because he doesn't think he is as cool Correct. as me. And that bothers him. Correct. And how do I know he thinks I'm cool? Because why would you tell a short guy, oh, my God, he thinks he's so tall? You'd never say that to a short guy because obviously the dude don't think he's tall. He's short. You think he's tall? Well, now maybe you will assume he thinks he's so tall. When he said that dude thinks he's so cool, he just freaking said, dude, that dude is cool. <laughs> and he's upset about it. Yeah. So I don't take personal offense to that because, number one, the dude doesn't know me. Number two, all he's doing is hating something about me that he lacks for himself. Right. So guess what? When I walk into a room, if everybody goes, man, this guy thinks he's so cool, I'll be like, freaking, yeah, these are my people. You must think I'm cool. They'll act like they don't. Right. But how many times have you turned a hater into a fan? Mm -hmm. I've had them come through here before. Yeah, yep. so you do the work, brother. You, if someone says, hey, listen, what did he say? Man, that was a lot. Dude, rewind the podcast. Listen to it 10 times. Mm -hmm. Okay, repetition is the mother of learning. Yep. Listen to it again. You'll hear it again. You'll hear it a different way every time. At the end of the day, I just gave you the information on how to change your mindset, which is, again, very important. Mindset, now your skill set, dude. Sales, closing, persuasion, marketing, personal branding. How do you blow up on social media? How do you leverage social media? How do you build a brand? Well, dude, if anyone built a brand over the next three years, which I believe everybody should, because, dude, pretty soon, dude, if you don't have a brand, you're probably, you're, you're, you're probably just going to be a nobody. Yeah. But but it's certain that you can leverage a brand to generate a ridiculous amount of deal flow and business and relationships and opening doors and opportunities. So you should be building a personal brand. But but uh, if you build a personal brand, you learn how to market, you learn how to close and you learn how to communicate and you learn AI, those are the five skill sets. And here's the good news, everybody can learn them. And if you're like, no, I'm 61, it's too late. See, that's a mindset issue. That is not a skill set issue, okay? That is a mindset issue, go handle your mind, okay? But when you get your mind right, boom, yes, you can. You just have to practice, you have to study, you have to work, you have to do the damn work. And then pretty soon you start to become proficient in these skills. Well, if you have those five skill sets, bro, trust me, come work for me, I'll, fuck, I'll hire you. Like, dude, trust me, if you're good at sales, closing, marketing, communicating, and freaking AI, and shh, dude, I'll hire you. Come work for me. Matter of fact, you can come work for me, bradlee.com. Come work with me. Okay. Put in an application. You said, you, um, you thrown that in at last, uh, real quick before I move on. Uh, um, number six, did we have a number six? That was build the skill sets after visualize success? No, no, number six is, uh, is seek information. Seek information. Yeah, like every day, bro, your brain's a computer. You should be constantly adding information to that computer so it's more powerful and it has more data. Mm -hmm. Okay, the knowledge is power. Now, people say applied knowledge is power. Well, again, the knowledge that you have to apply it is knowledge and that you'd have to have that to apply it. So it's like quit being semantical. Yeah. <laughs> is that even a word? No, but I know exactly what you mean. Remember, I dropped out of high right. school. Now, at the end of the day, your seeking of knowledge will cause you to change your beliefs is what it's doing. Because if you want to change what you're getting, you got to change what you're doing. If you want to change what you're doing, you have to change what you believe because that's what controls your actions and your thoughts and your behavior. Your beliefs control your behavior. So if you want to change your behavior, you have to change your beliefs. There's no other way to do it. So if you want to change your beliefs, then you have to get new information. There's no, there's no other way to do that. In order to change what you believe, you have you have to receive new information of some kind that changes it. It won't change on its own. So you have to get that new information. So every day, if you knew that to be the case and you want more than you do right now, 
Well, then, dude, you already know. You don't know something you need to know, bro. Okay, so why are you not actively seeking information on a daily basis? How come you're not reading every book you can get your hands on? How come you're not consuming information like it's freaking, you know, nourishment? Because it is. So people don't do that. There's a lot of people in the world, dude, they haven't read a book in years. They think, oh, yeah, that's freaking, yeah, like he's going to show me how to be a millionaire. He wouldn't be selling a book on it if he even, all this negative crap. It's like, listen, your mindset's your issue, bro. Stay small. Mm -hmm. Okay. I tell people, listen, you want me to save you from drowning? Swim towards me. Nice. What's the best book you read lately? Lately? Again, I was going to say mine, but um, what's the title of your book? The Hard, the hard way. way. Yeah. Available on Amazon. Yeah. Oh. But I think the best book, I mean, Agile Selling. Have you read that book? Mm -mm, I haven't heard of it. Agile Selling. Mm -hmm. Pretty good book. To sell as human. I keep reading The Four Agreements. As a Man Thinketh. Those are always epic books. Mm -hmm. Let me see. This one I just got. It's pretty damn epic. It's by the Harbing, Har Arbing, Arbinger Institute. It's a kind of book on leadership and, and, and how you like really build a valuable, valuable culture and team, which again, I've over the years, I've struggled with that. Like when people say, Brad, what's your biggest Achilles heel? It's always people, man, dealing with and finding and freaking developing people. That is the hardest damn thing. Yeah. Let's see. What's it called here? What's it called here? This is the book. It's called, I think that was it. Yep. Leadership and Self-Deception, Getting Out of the Box, The Arbinger Institute. That's a good one. That's a good, that's the best one I've read recently. Those are interesting words to put together. Leadership and Self-Deception. You've mentioned AI a couple of times. Good Say again. Good book. I'm, I wrote it down. Hey, but you want to know the best book I've read in a long time? Yeah. But it was a while ago, so it didn't come up till yep. now. The Road Less Stupid. Mm. Keith Cunningham. Keith Cunningham. Yeah, it's a great book. Love it. You've mentioned uh, is one of the, the newer skill sets, the one that you added on at the end a couple of times, AI. What are some of the, the unique ways or most productive, effective ways you're using AI today? Well, I mean, it used to take a person a long time to write test questions for their courses. Mm -hmm. We built AI that'll go through the content and create the best questions you ever could think about. You can make them hard. You can make them easy. You can make a hundred of them in five seconds. We leverage it obviously for our various, you know, companies. So Lightspeed, you know, builds training systems, world-class training systems for companies and subject matter experts. So we leverage AI to do a lot of the layout, you know, curriculum, the thumbnails, believe it or not, the little thumbnails that go in all the, mm. you know, things, uh, testing, role play. We are, we're also starting to use it to determine the best place to embed interactivity the questions mm -hmm. to ask mm -hmm. and and how to determine what that does. Mm -hmm. We're just getting in bed with it, man. That's why I'm saying, like, if you're not looking at AI on how it improves your business, it's going to put you out of business. Mm -hmm. Someone else is going to do it and you're going to be screwed because you're going to do it the old long way. Mm -hmm. So that's light speed. And then, you know, my financial company, we're using AI to do a lot of freaking prospecting. Believe it or not, they've got AI bots that are conversationalists that can pretty much almost sell the product. You've for got you the, the play in there right now. Yep. And then hand it off to some agent, mm -hmm. like a licensed agent. That's what handoff calls. How else are we using AI? We're using AI to create content. You know, I can edit a podcast in seconds with AI or at least rough cut, let's call it. Mm -hmm. And then the, and then the editor goes in and fine tunes. We're using, you know, AI to create all kinds of, of, of educational materials mm -hmm. based off you know, my three page document and core beliefs. Okay. Now make a three week course on that include workbooks and exercises to reinforce each lesson. And all of a sudden, blah, dude, I got a whole curriculum. Here. Amazing. Yeah. I've taken, uh, some of my most successful, uh, sales calls with sellers when I'm buying houses, I've taken those recordings, turned them into transcripts and then asked AI to create this, create the, uh, the script so I can go ahead and hand it off and hire, delegate that to somebody else. And it's just, it was magical, you know, the, uh, yeah, I think the future, like it used to be like the person with the answers. And now I think it's really the person with the questions. Cause if you can ask the AI the right questions, you can get whatever you want. Right. 
Well, keep in mind, dude, it's still artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. It's faster. I don't know if it's better than actual intelligence. I'm not saying that, but I would say that it's sure a lot easier than starting with a blank page every time. Absolutely. Yeah. But 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 again, like one time I'm like, hey, let's 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 see if AI can give me a beautiful piece of copy for my website. And I say, you know, talk about Lightspeed that does this, 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 this. And it spit out some copy that had because it has no clue what Lightspeed really is. And it doesn't know. So because it's just got access to the to the Internet. Mm -hmm. So like unless you train it and train it and train it and train it and train it, it's not better than actual intelligence in some cases. But if you're not leveraging it and using it, you're dumb because it's going to be it's going to be eventually where dude, yeah. listen, when you make a call, it's an AI person. It, there's going to be AI girlfriends. There's going to be freaking AI running yeah. the world for sure. The big saying is that this is the worst it's ever going to be. And by the way, you know how much power and, and data it takes to run AI? I do not, no. Massive, just like mining Bitcoin. So at the end of the day, power centers, data centers, watch the value of those things. If you're smart, AI is coming. And if, you're, and, if, and if AI is coming, well, then there needs to be, you know, data centers. Mm -hmm. So I'd be looking at data centers. And, and I mean, I think Apple and Google and Yahoo, they're all trying to buy data centers right now. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they know. Mm -hmm. You know, I think is I don't know if we were recording or not, but we were talking about networks and you're talking about and we mentioned it a little bit on the people that you hang out with. Get rid of the negative, add the positive. What are some effective strategies for people making their venture into entrepreneurship to the effective strategies to build that network, a powerful network that's going to serve them and support them and actually help what they're doing? Well, I mean, the more hands you shake, the more money you make. Mm -hmm. So, you know, get out there, you know, be seen. Say yes. Quit saying no. Quit being lazy. Get out there, shake hands, meet people, do the work. A lot of people won't do that because they haven't done the work I just spoke on before. They don't they don't feel that they're worth anything or they have anything to say or why would anyone like me and blah, 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 blah. But once you get that work done on yourself and you actually believe in yourself a little bit more. Well, now the answer to your last question is, man, you get out there. Mm -hmm. How are you going to meet someone if you're sitting at home? Yeah. Because that's step one. That's the easiest thing. And again, I don't I don't try to complicate things like most people just need to get out and shake hands and introduce themselves and ask questions and be interested. That's why I'd go read the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, mm -hmm. leverage the techniques taught in that book, and then go just meet as many people as you can. And pretty soon you're going to find best friends. You might find a wife or a, or a husband. You might find a freaking business partner. You might find a client. You might find whatever. But guess what? You'll meet a lot of people and those become relationships and relationships is where money comes from. So if you want more money, get more relationships. So how do you attract and nurture those relationships? Well, guys, you lead, you lead with value. That's what you do. So like I've had people call me and say, Brad, how can I bring you value? Now, if you think about the question, it's innocent. They're just trying to find out how to, how to give me value so they can bring me values. Right? Mm -hmm. Like I shouldn't be, against that. But if you really think about it, which most people don't do, you're asking me to tell you something that's valuable to you. Mm -hmm. So you're asking me for value. <laughs> Why are you asking me for value? I said to pro lead with value. In other words, bring me value is how you build relationships. Bring me value, bring me compliment, bring me better feeling, bring me less headache, bring me attention, bring me some money, bring me some value. And I will like you more than likely, unless you're a total mm -hmm. dick. So you lead with value. You don't start asking me for value. Right. And most people do even innocently enough when they're like, Hey, how do I provide value? Cause they're more than willing to provide the value, but they need you to tell them how, well, dude, that's, that's value. So you just asked me for a value. You violated the room. How do you, just provide value. Well, dude, you got to make some assumptions. Well, wait a minute. I was told we shouldn't assume. Bullshit. I assume all the time. I assume I'm going to get wealthier. I assume I'm going to get healthier. I assume I'm going to get happier. And it works. It, that's what happens. So it's like you should expect things. But ultimately, man, you you, you get out there. You provide value. You, you do what you say you're going to do. And you can make an assumption that they want more money. They want more time or they want more attention. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. If I gave you more money, more time, and more attention every time I came around, how would you like Yeah, me? I'd love you. And I could call you and get anything yep. out of you because, bro, 
I am valuable to you. Now, when I call you and I say, hey, man, I'm moving, man. I know you have a truck. I hate to impose. Can you come help me move on a Sunday? You're like, dude, no problem. Mm -hmm. Shit you do for me. So, again, that's how you build them. That's how you attract them. That's how you nurture them. And then you need to leverage them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, now people get all skittish about leveraging people. Oh, that's using people. That's bad. Again, it, it, the most successful civilizations in the world do leverage each other. It's called a team. It's called freaking you do for me and I'll do for you. And both of our boats rise, you know, high tides rise all boats. So at the end of the day, if you use that concept and you're not shy about, you know, leveraging your network and leveraging your resources, dude, you, 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 you now, you know, extrapolate extreme value out of those relationships. And now you're what's called resourceful. Like, dude, I can get, I can, I got a Rolodex that like is worth hundred million dollars easy. Well, why aren't, why am I not tapping into it? Who says I'm not like, trust me, dude, like relationships are valuable. So if that's true, then man, mm -hmm. why aren't people out meeting new people aggressively all day, every mm -hmm. day? It's a good question. They're home. They're home. Yep. With their, their home with their freaking family because, you know, family is important. And, and it's like, well, yeah, family is important. But, dude, don't you want to freaking be able to provide for the family in a better way? Don't you want better health care, better schools, more money, better vacations, better memories, better Christmases, better holidays? Dude, that takes money. Okay, so guess what? Yeah, I want to go home and spend time with my daughter. But guess what? I'll, I'll be home right after I do this. I'm going to go meet a few people. It's, everyone wants to make it one thing or the other. It's both, man. Spend time with your daughter and meet new people. Bring your daughter to meet people. Like, well, uh, you know, I don't want her talking to strangers. Why? Strangers are where the money is, guys. Don't be afraid of strangers. Like, dude, that's just bad information when we were little. Be afraid of strangers. No, what they're saying is be careful. Okay, mm -hmm. you can be careful, but I'm not going to be freaking closed off and I'm not going to be, you know, hidden. Okay, you want to get on the radar, not stay off the radar. You want to you want to be seen, not be un, not not go unseen. You want to speak up, not quiet down. You want to get attention. Yep, yep. Have you read Gary's book, Day Trading Attention? Uh, yeah, I'm reading yep. it. I got it right here. Yeah, pretty good. I mean, again, though, you know, when you listen to one of Gary's books, in my mind, you've kind of listened to all of Gary's books because it's the same stuff he's saying. He's just saying it in a different way. Mm -hmm. It's all good. This one's a little more tactical, I think. It's, uh, well, it's a, more, a little more up to date. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude, I love Gary. Gary's got some good information. Yeah. And by the way, I teach people sometimes how to build a personal brand because I've done it and I know how to mm -hmm. do it. And I give Gary credit for that because at some point, now I didn't realize that's what Gary was saying when he said it. Mm -hmm. But when I did it and I'm looking back, what did I do there? Oh, I did what he was saying to do. And that is... I document, I don't create. Mm -hmm. He said that a long time ago. I didn't understand what he meant. Now I understand exactly what he means. And that is what you should do. You should document, not create. Many, too many people are out there trying to figure out what content they need to create. And it's difficult. And you can't create enough to put out there that's required to build a brand. You need three to four posts per day, mm -hmm. per channel, mm -hmm. for years. Okay, so how are you going to come up with four kick-ass things to say every single day of your life? Right. Eventually, dude, you don't. And that's why people don't. But you are being you every single day of your life. So if you just capture that, bro, you got freaking content for days. Unless you're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. I had, I told this one guy that one time and he said, well, well, dude, I'm not doing anything to film. <laughs> and I said, well, there's your problem. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard a few people say that. Like, how do I become a big, big on the Internet? It's like, do something, right? <clears throat> yeah, people ask me, how do I get around all these important people? And I said, you become one. I'm invited into these rooms. And what's crazy, dude, is people that I think in my mind are like somewhat of freaking like business icons and like, damn, these people are the real deal. I walk in and they're acting like I'm the celebrity. Like they've been following me for years and love everything I say and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, dude, you're a fan? Mm. Well, yeah, they're a fan. Oh, wow. Shit. God darn. Holy smokes. That's crazy. Well, who am I? I'm a high school dropout. Well, again, dude, if you really look back and, and look from a different perspective, 
who am I? Like, dude, I've done a lot of good shit. I've helped a lot of people. I'm, I'm I, you know, that self worth and confidence and 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 belief in myself. Because again, I used to, you know, well, I didn't really do much. I haven't really done. I'm not a billionaire. I haven't done anything. But dude, in reality, I've done a lot, and I've done a lot to help people. It's not I'm so rich and I'm so great. It's I've done a lot to help people. I've helped a lot of people, mm -hmm. and the people I help go out and help people, which means. The ripple effect, I've helped millions of people. So if I've helped millions of people, bro, and I believe in myself, when I walk into those rooms, I don't think anybody in the room is better than me. I think they're ahead of me. And so now I'm curious. I'm genuinely interested in who they are and what they think and what do they do. And I ask questions and I listen to the answers. And freaking next thing you know, either a relationship grows or it doesn't. And I've had plenty where I've met people. Relationship didn't really grow out of it. Why? Well, I don't know, you know, did I could, you know, they didn't like what they heard. They, maybe they deep down were, were, were haters. I don't know. But the ones that did responsible for every dollar I make, if you think about it, every dollar you make is, is coming from a relationship of some kind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if that's true, would it behoove you to have more relationships or fewer? More for sure. So again, ask somebody, why aren't you out there intentionally meeting 10 people new, new 10 people a day, mm. new, and then they're going to make excuses as to why they don't. Because if you really, truly want to be successful, you need to be out meeting people. You need to be showing up, saying yes, doing the work, doing the work on yourself if you need to. But, you know, eventually you're out there meeting people and man, you'd be surprised how fast you go. Holy smokes, man. I can do real estate over here with Matt. There's an investment opportunity right there with him right now. There, the, I got this over here because of Matt. I just met Brad. Now Brad said he'll freaking hire me if I want. Like, damn, dude, there's opportunity everywhere. Dude, you're starting to think abundantly now. Hey, welcome to the team, chief. Let's go. Time's a wasting. We ain't got long. Mm -hmm. So all the things that you do, what do you like best? I like, believe it, this is going to sound lame and cheesy. Go for it. <laughs> but I like, I like being me mm -hmm. the best. Yeah. Because dude, uh, honestly, like I just get to go around and be funny and smoke cigars and speak and help and think and, and brainstorm and collaborate and, and, you know, travel and freaking you know, it's, it's awesome. When, with being you, what, and you interviewing so many people and talking to so many people, and then you having the opportunity to, to speak to people and being interviewed yourself. What is one thing that you want to talk about more, but you don't get the chance to? I get the chance to. I just don't take the opportunity mm -hmm. to. And um, only because, you know, I'm still seeking in that department. And that's maybe bringing people maybe to the to the creator. Mm -hmm. But I think that day will come. I usually get to talk about whatever I want because that is what I talk mm -hmm. about. So if you just called me and said, hey, Brad, I want you to speak at my next thing, I would say, well, what do you want me to talk about? And you'd say, hey, I want you to talk about what you were saying on that podcast about like confidence. Now, I'll talk about confidence because that's what you're paying me to do. But I'll say whatever I want when I get mm -hmm. there and it'll all go back to confidence, meaning I can say whatever I want and lead it back to confidence. I can freaking I can talk about an elephant. Like, in other words, my if I want to talk about an elephant and you said talk about confidence, I'll walk in and talk about the elephant and tie it back to confidence mm -hmm. and, and I'll leave and you'll high five me and be like, dude, that was freaking awesome. That's exactly what they needed. But yet I talked about the, the elephant the whole time. Mm -hmm. But so with that being said, you know, I don't I don't think that there's a lot of things I wish I could say or could have had a chance to say and didn't. I, 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 I say what I what I feel mostly. Mm -hmm. And um, I do that almost I can't think of when I'm not doing it. So I would say nothing. There's nothing I want. I wish I could say more of that. I, that I don't other than, you know, faith based things that I'm, that I'm still seeking answers to. So I'm not a false prophet. Mm -hmm. How long have you been on that, that search? Well, I mean, it's been, you know, six, six years, I think that again, I keep, I keep, you know, man, there's some rabbit holes yeah. in religion, yeah. dude. I mean, again, a lot of people think the other day I, I, I had a video out where someone was praying over me and everyone's like, oh, congratulations, you found Jesus. <clears throat> and I said, first of all, 
His name isn't Jesus, never was. So I didn't find Jesus. Matter of fact, you still need to look for him because if you think his name's Jesus, you don't even know the truth. So, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know that you were religious. I'm not religious. Religion is man-made. I don't, I'm not religious. Okay. I'm faith-based. What does that mean? Well, that means I know there's a creator and I'm reading and looking and seeking like the scripture tells us to. Um, so I know more and, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to cause anyone to do, I'm not going to say things that I don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. Like I know for sure his name wasn't Jesus period. And I know, and now again, I mean, the Buddhists have their beliefs. The Hindus have their belief, you know, there, there's all kinds Muslims, you know, um, Jewish, there's so many religions out there. So again, I, you know, I believe that there's some truth to all of it, mm -hmm. right? But there's only one truth. And, and that's the question is what's the truth. And, and I need to find out the truth before I can go out and speak the truth. Why? Cause I don't, I don't claim to know. I'm, I'm one of the people that'll tell you, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, you're going to go to hell if you're not certain. No, I'm certain there's a creator. I'm not certain about all the shit I read. Why? Well, because it's corrupted by men. It's corrupted by humans, bro. And when people say, no, it isn't, it's pure as snow driven in the winter, bro. You're naive. Okay. There is factual omissions and errors and translation errors upon translation errors for thousands of years. And we are thousands of years down the road. So you could possibly believe a lie from the 1500s, like the name Jesus. Okay. They say that's translation. Matt, I don't know if you're into Jesus or not, but that is not a translation. Okay. It's a transliteration. And ultimately it means Somebody changed his name at some point so 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 they could communicate in the language that it was being translated into and everybody would understand. That's a transliteration. Okay, not a translation, okay? A transliteration, which means what? You made up a name. So it's like if a Chinese guy comes from, you know, Hong Kong and we can't even read those letters or even pronounce anything, you know, we say, we'll just call you Bob. Okay, that didn't change his name. But everybody knows him as Bob and everyone calls him Bob. And he even starts calling himself Bob. Mm -hmm. Ten years later, this is Bob. And he's like, you know, hello. And you're, and you're like, you know, well, you're, is that your, your name's Bob? Well, no, but nobody can pronounce my name. So they call me Bob. That's what Jesus is. That's what Jesus is. Because mm -hmm. Jesus came from Aesus and Aesus is a transliteration of the name Yahshua. Yes, right. His yep. name was Yahoo, Yahshua. So not to have Bible study right now, that's but right. then, then the whole thing is, you know, there's, there's, there's rumors and things that say that that story is not even real. So again, I think after my research, I'll bring my findings to the mm -hmm. world because I'm certain. And once I'm certain, cause I'm certain there's a creator, I'm certain Yahshua existed. Mm -hmm. I am certain that, that we did not evolve from a big bang. That is certain. So I'm, I'm seeking, which coincidentally scripture tells us to do. So I'm just following orders, dog. And when I'm done, trust me, I'm coming out with all guns blazing, saving souls. And I might even be saving souls right now on accident. So hopefully that's the case. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Last question. What's in the future? We live in kind of in, a, in crazy times right now. Lots of weird things going on all over the globe. What are you excited about most for the future? Dude, right now I am, I am accepting... I am excited about hiring people, essentially. I've got a thing out that basically says, if you're not making X amount of money, come work for me. I'll train you on how to make, you know, a good living. And then we'll talk about getting out of the rat race because you got to have excess. You got to have a little excess. Okay. Well, if you don't have excess guys, you're, you're working paycheck to paycheck. You're struggling. Okay. Come work for me. I will freaking hire you from at any company you choose of mine. And I will teach you specifically how to freaking win the mindset, the skill sets and the habits. I will teach you those things and give you the job. And it's exciting because dude, I've already done it and it's starting to crank up and it's like, holy moly, this is a win, win, win for everybody. So if someone's out there with a shovel in their hand, drop the shovel. Okay. You need to learn sales, closing, marketing, personal branding. And then if you don't know what to do with those skills, 
I'll, I'll have you employ them for me. If you're doing the habits, the skill sets, and the mindset that I teach you, brother, oh my God, you're unstoppable. I'll have you as one of my soldiers until you actually elevate and you'll realize, damn, I could be doing this for myself. Well, that's the next level I haven't introduced yet. I call that the Millionaire Prep Academy. Mm. But again, I just need to get people out of the rat race. And so that's what I'm doing. And it's exciting because, dude, I'm starting to see some fruits. People are starting to freaking literally change lives. I thought, and dude, it's fun. It's fun. I mean, I don't, if I wanted to, I could quit working and, and live and, you know, just go enjoy life. But isn't it fun, dude, helping other people live better and, and solve problems. And like, you know, mm -hmm. to me, dude, I want the whole world to be successful in order to do that. You know, I got to show a lot of people how to succeed. Now, a lot of people are like, well, dude, there's people out there, man. They're not going to listen. And I'm not worried about those people. I'll worry about those people once I help everybody who is listening. I'll help everybody who does want to get out of the rat race. Like, so again, if any listeners of the show want to come to work with me, just go to bradley.com and click the work with me tab and fill out an application. My team will interview you and see if you're a fit. Awesome. But if you ain't, if you ain't making decent money, dude, there's, I would jump on that. Very good. Bradley, and that's lea.com, right? You know sure that. Get the right. And by the yep. way, Matt, I want you to come in and brainstorm yep. with me so we can get, you know, a bigger footprint from you. Yep. I'll hit Maria up right after we're done. Dude, you got information people need, mm -hmm. brother. They do. Especially the, yeah, the way everything is going right now, that's. It's weird how you need to quit being so you need to quit being so greedy with your information. I, know, I, I, I hold I hold them back too much. <laughs> you need to get it out there. Quit quit keeping it a secret. For sure, for sure. Well, Brad, it's been a pleasure. Um, I'll see you very very soon, and uh, let's do this again. Likewise, thanks you for bet. having me. Take care, bud.